Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. This is episode 200. I'm Dr. Stephen Grawl, doctor of naturopathy and founder of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. And I'm here today with my co-host, the co-host of the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast, Julia Hayes. Thanks so much for being here today, Julia. Yes, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I always love when we get to do one of these together. It feels like it brings the whole show, you know, at, at to a point at the end of the year. So 100%. That is today's show. So we are going to actually, we did this, I think, probably for the first episode ever of the uh, Health Coach Success podcast that we did in episode 100. We'll link that up today in the show notes. We actually have a bunch of links today. So if you want to go to ihp.coach forward slash 200, that'll take you right to today's show notes, three big takeaways. We're going to link up uh, Julia's recap for 2022, and we'll link up episode 100 as well. It's always nice to look back another full year and see what predictions and what recap we went from the past 12 months. So our goal today, and our goal hopefully every single show, is to really stay current with this industry. So it's the overall health, wellness, fitness-based industry. A lot of people are nurses and chiropractors and personal trainers and estheticians and yoga and massage and a lot of health coaches from all over the world. And then there's people who are thinking about becoming an IHP or certified health coach too. So our job is to share not just the learnings of basically how to become a better coach, but it's also how to develop a career you can really love and be proud of and and support your family too. And so that's what we love to do. Just the more people out there that are integrative, that are not saying like, this is the only way to do it, the better. And so on Monday shows, if you're new to the show, I try to give you tips from being in the industry now for 25 years. And Julia on her Thursday shows will actually be interviewing people from the real world, IHPs and other certified health coaches uh, sharing with you how they have developed their own successful practice, whether that be virtually or offline in an actual center or studio as well. So that is that. That's our recap for uh, what the show is actually going to be all about. And now we're going to dive into what we saw as our big takeaways over the past 12 months or 100 shows is a better way to say it. And then we'll go for our predictions over the next 100 shows, over the next 12 months. Where do we see this industry moving to? And again, this is the overall health, wellness, and fitness industry. So, Julia, we're going to have you up first. You're going to get to go and give us your one, two, or three big takeaways from 2022 over these past 100 shows. Sure. So, uh, what one thing that I've seen a big uptake in, and um, I think it's really a good predictor of kind of where things are going, kind of from a health and, and wellness standpoint in our country, is a lot of people who aren't necessarily already immersed into the holistic kind of integrative space uh, taking advantage of lab testing. So they're people that don't really know what we're doing, but they're interested. They're like, geez, it seems like they're different answers. I'm not getting the answers that I want. But we've seen that, I think, come from a lot of, you know, that holistic mindset or, you know, a holistic type of family and the child, you know, then runs the labs. Whereas I think people are coming into it completely from a different perspective now where they see that there's a real difference and perhaps a real, you know, opportunity to gain information about their health, their wellness, what they can do to optimize all all sorts of imbalances And they're going in a direction a little bit kind of away from that natural conventional sense to more of a holistic functional lab, uh, you know, running functional labs. Yeah, I agree with that. I've seen that happen really just progressively, very slowly over, let's, let's say, the last maybe three to four years. And people now, because again, we look at it as our own little niche, like these people know about at-home lab testing. But if you talk to the average individual, they have no idea. But that's what always happens in the beginning is that at first, only people who are really into holistic health know about it. And then they tell some friends and a couple more people know. But it hasn't gotten that big. But now you're starting to see it more online. And I think as that happens over the next three to five years, there's just going to be an explosion. Like everybody is going to know about it. You're going to see it more in like a uh, CVS or a Walgreens, like there'll be more and more places for these at-home labs to pop up and they'll be simple. There'll be easy ones like your vitamin D or, you know, maybe even like a B12 level test, but eventually people are going to become, it's going to become more mainstream. So I, I totally agree with that. What were some of the labs that you saw run more often that, uh, you hadn't seen before by like first time lab customers? 
Yeah, I think the hair tissue mineral analysis was definitely one. Um, people kind of just getting into a different realm other than blood testing. So the hair tissue test was was one. And a lot of people gain very actionable data from that. It, it kind of can seem like a complicated test to somebody who doesn't know what it means or for IHPs just starting out who are trying to learn like the real intricate ins and outs of it. But kind of at a very like baseline level, it it's a very easy test to just optimize somebody's immune system, say with, you know, what, their, what are their zinc levels like? What's stress looking like and heavy metals? So it's a really nice way to get somebody just on like a foundational basic protocol. And I think we've seen a lot of great success with that, you know, in the Equalife practice. And then the other one is hormone testing. I think a lot of women taking, you know, their fertility into their own hands, maybe they didn't get the, you know, answers that they wanted with just a regular OB and doing more hormone testing, even just to get ready for pregnancy. Like what are, what, where is my baseline? Um, are things looking good? And they weren't necessarily of the, you know, purely holistic mindset. And it also is a great way for me to then talk about like nutrition and priming their body with nutrients um, outside of just like the actual hormone numbers. So I would say those two are the two were the two biggest. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think 100% those were the two biggest uptick, even more so than a food sensitivity test, which is like a, an intro lab for a lot of people. But one, I think, and again, let me know, uh, well, there's two parts to this. So one, I agree with the minerals and metals test that HTMA, that it's a great first place to start. You're basically looking at like simple levels of stress, overall levels of minerals, highs, lows, and balancing ratios, and then heavy metals. So for sure, and then uh, for pregnancy and getting ready for pregnancy, which is almost like never talked about before, but actually like how do you prepare your body for the healthiest and happiest pregnancy? That, that became bigger this year, no doubt about that. What I wanna ask you though, is for a lot of these first time lab clients, how do you, how have you seen practitioners and yourself speak to them differently maybe than someone who's already been into holistic health? Because I know from my perspective, you can't give them the same plan. Like they maybe have never taken nutritional supplements before, or they're more skeptical. So how have you seen that and how have you overcome it? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. I think it's very important to one, kind of meet the client where they're at. So understanding, I always ask like, what, what's your comfort level with taking supplements? Do you, are you kind of like the more is the better? Give it all to me. No, I only want to take a few. And in that question, you can also kind of gain their skepticism, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think what the approach I usually like to take is, especially with something like hormones, but even something like the HTMA is when we're seeing just foundational deficiencies and maybe someone's too stressed and they're not sleeping great, forget the progesterone support, the estrogen balance necessarily right at first. If you can get somebody just on board with maybe changing their sleeping habits and doing some lifestyle modifications for stress and then doing foundational things like the daily nutritional support shake, vitamin D. I mean, it's like the lowest hanging fruit <laughs> out of all the labs we've run. I can't tell you how many clients have debilitating mood-based symptoms and their mm -hmm. vitamin D is at like a 15 or a 25. And so sim simply just getting someone on the DNS, the daily nutritional support, vitamin D, a good omega and some magnesium, maybe adrenal soothe makes a world of difference. And now the client is feeling so much better. And then maybe we rerun the hormone lab in three, four months. Sometimes changing their stress and their sleep helps their progesterone. Uh, but the client really gets a confidence essentially in what we're trying to do by us just addressing foundations. And I think it can be so beneficial uh, just by doing those few things at first. And then they're feeling a thousand times better. And they're like, okay, what else do you have for me? And we can fine tune from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of people who say like, I, I don't uh, want to use nutritional supplements. I want to do it just, you know, they like call it naturally. But the issue is this, and, and I'm all for that. Like I'm here to, just like you to support people however they need me. But the problem is this, I don't know anybody who's in a, like low mood, low energy, dysregulated blood sugar, and it's the winter, that they're going to all of a sudden somehow change their sleep, somehow change their energy. They're going to somehow start to meditate. Like I just, or they're going to somehow get the energy to exercise. 
I just don't, I don't ever see that happening. And it never happened with me either. And so even though you can change your diet and you should, like, that's fantastic. Like that's the start of the foundation. But if you can't optimize your vitamin D and you're in the winter, there's people like, oh, you should never take vitamin D supplementation. Like, how can you say that when you are a 25 or a 30, you know, on your blood work, that's directly correlated with hormone issues, depression, low mood, et cetera. So for me, it's like, just like you said, the foundational things, like even if you were to only do two things or three things, it's okay. It's the daily nutritional support or a daily activated multi, but again, like got to get some good nutrition. And so for me, the DNS kind of like makes you just want to put in some berries into that smoothie and get some water. So now you're hydrating, not just drinking coffee in the morning. And then vitamin D is a must. And then omega threes. Like if there's mood issues, there's energy issues, there's high levels of inflammation. It's like, okay, we got to get into the omega threes. So I agree. Like first time people, we're not going to overwhelm them with a lot of nutritional supplements, but at the same time, that's the catalyst for what you said to then them to even say, okay, great. What's next? Cause they start to pull themselves out of it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. They pull themselves out of it or then they, they just simply start feeling so much better. And now you're able to one, like mentally, you know, conceptualize doing more, but also now you're kind of buying into the fact that this is drastically improving your well-being. And so maybe a lot of their symptoms, if we're talking about, you know, a woman looking for fertility, a lot of her, you know, cycle symptoms change or her energy is better. And so she does want to rerun the lab and, you know, us really optimize hormones, you know, for conceiving, right? But sometimes just doing that foundational stuff is enough. And yeah, so I see people, the, the two biggest things that come from it are either they drop their skepticism a little bit um, with, you know, taking nutritional supplements, but in the same, you know, same token, they also uh, really start to feel significantly better. And that increases their motivation to continue to take the next step. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all part of the one package, you know, it really is. And I agree that very, uh, most women and in infertility based issues is stress, inflammation, sometimes digestive issues based. And so we have to really get to that meaning like you can take all of the hormone support you want, either conventional medicine or natural, but you still have to address the foundational. And so that's why I agree. Start with less, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And then as long as they know you're going to be retesting, you're going to be with them every single month, every step of the way, that's what's important. That's what we tell coaches too. never do a one off appointment. I mean, you can, if you have to, because if that's the only thing the person will do, okay. And then hopefully you can convince them be like, we need to actually check in every two to four weeks to make sure that you're on the right track because you should progressively every week uh, be moving a little step closer to that. So, so that's great. Any other takeaways for 2022 that you saw that were maybe, maybe new, maybe different over the last 12 months? Yeah. So one thing that I thought was interesting is there seems to be more men running functional lab testing. And I think kind of getting more into the IHP community, men mm -hmm. kind of choosing health coaching as a path and also men running more of these tests. And I don't know if I actually have an explanation as to why, but I think maybe it's that, you know, women in their life are convincing them that this is, you know, meaningful and they're actually, you know, going ahead and doing it, but men specifically kind of taking their health into their own hands, but also, uh, you know, men in the IHP community, which is always, you know, when I do my Thursday interviews, it's always so great to have men because I feel like they offer a little bit of a different perspective than women in the sense of kind of what it means to help somebody. And so mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that, that was just kind of one, one new thing that I noticed. Yeah. I don't disagree with that at all. And it's funny because when I look at uh, IHP live from last October, so maybe like four or five, four months ago or so, maybe only 10%, 15% of the audience there. Uh, yeah, probably 15% were men, but I think that we're going to see that jump up for next year, like at next year's live event. I just have no doubt about it. And I think, and again, maybe I'm looking at this differently, but it's also like wellness is correlated a little bit now with more like, at least what I call it, healthy biohacking. And it's like tracking data and analytics and like some of the things that I know the clients that I work with that they, they love getting into. And it's like, okay, like how can I improve my overall performance or how could this help me at work or if becoming an IHP? I want this niche of, you know, helping men over 40 build more muscle. It just seems like there's a little bit more excitement about it. And maybe even they can see a career path for them. 
where before maybe they didn't see it as a career path. But I now know that there's so many men on social media as like the biohacking person or the at-home labs person or the gut health person. And, you know, in general, this isn't always the case, but a lot of men are going to relate to men and a lot of women are going to relate to women. And so, I I mean, my practice has always been 75 to 80% women, like it always has, but that doesn't mean that some men out there are only going to want to work with this person because, Oh, I feel like they're going to understand me better. And no doubt about it. Some women are going to work with only women because like only, you know, she would be able to understand me. And so I just think that getting more, um, men, women, and different niches, like people serving different niches is never a bad thing. And, and I'd love to see it. I love uh, having a nice diverse, uh, based IHP base and as many people serving as many different people as possible. So yeah, I love that one. Yeah. And I think men too, up until now, like health to men has always been like, do I have a six pack? Do I have like a ton of muscle mass? And it was more about like the aesthetics of it. And I feel like kind of to your point, men are realizing, okay, if I'm really well, like I'm having way more creativity or productivity at work, Mm -hmm. or I'm a better father or a husband, or I have more energy to, you know, blow the grass, like whatever it may be, feel like health in in the male mindset has kind of gone beyond, you know, what, what do you look like in a sense? Yeah. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because, and for me, uh, besides maybe aesthetics, it was, well, my, my PCP, my MD, has never talked about these things before. And so, you know, I don't necessarily know if I believe it, right? It's not in my blood work. I can only run blood work because I used to hear that many, many years ago, but I really don't hear that as much. And I think that that's, I think that that's a changing tide in general over the last two years, people have become a little uh, disenchanted with the whole conventional medicine only model where only one thing you're told to do, and then it's totally discounted all the natural health things that could help you get well. And so, yeah, I, I, I for sure have, have seen it. And I don't know that I have an answer. You know, I don't know that I have the specific answer, but definitely there are more men getting into the natural health based field uh, than, than ever before. And that's a great thing. So, yeah. All right, let's start to, well, let me share with you a couple of my 2022. And then I'd love to say, okay, well, what do we look forward to? Because I always like the looking forward. I always do my state of the industry address where I'm kind of saying like, this is what I see over the next 12 months, but I'm going to forecast 12, 24 months in the future so that, you know, we as a health and wellness community, we're always ready. We're always you know, positioned beforehand. But before we get there, um, what I saw over the last 100 episodes or so, 12 months, is a lot of practitioners including our own Ecolife team, getting more comfortable with a virtual practice or virtual only practice. Meaning like kind of, it was difficult for me in the beginning, wrapping your head around, never ever seeing a person in person. It's like everything from your initial intake to then your lab results uh, or your wellness plan to your follow-ups is just always over video. And now I think that, well, one, we were forced to do it, right? 20, late 2020, 2021. Um, but now it's just kind of like it's normal. It's very normal for us not to even be in person right now doing a video uh, Zoom based interview. I always say Skype because that's what we did. We've been doing this for a long time. Since about 2012, <laughs> we've been doing <laughs> virtual practice, but the rest of the world's kind of caught up now. And so people are getting used to it and they're saying, no, I don't need to spend $1,000 on rent every month, $2,000 on rent or more. I remember when I had my wellness centers and studio. And obviously you were a part of that. I mean, we're not talking about thousands. We're talking about tens of thousands of dollars every month in Boston rent. And it's a lot. And so like, well, what if you didn't need that? What if you didn't have that overhead every month? What if you didn't have a landlord? What if you could travel and still do your consultations? You know, I mean, I think it's pretty great. So that was one thing that I saw. And the second was um, wellness and fitness-based professionals being more comfortable with promoting their favorite things that they use. So before, if you were an ambassador for a company, like I, I'm a big promoter of water filters, air filters, toxin-free basic environment products that I use. And I get asked all the time. And so if I work, if I like a company, I will say, hey, do they have an ambassador program or affiliate program? And if so, I'm going to promote, I'm going to research whatever I like best. And then I'm always going to promote whatever I like best. So sometimes there is no, you know, link like for the mattresses or healthy home things. There's no, like, there's no link that I use, but for some things, if there are, there are, 
And people are now, I think, even in the wellness-based space where we've been taught to like, you know, only like never charge for any of these things. It's like not okay to be charged for it. You realize how much of your time you're answering people's questions for free and how much time you're doing researching. And so it's okay to be compensated. Even if it's it's just a little bit, it's not a lot, but it's enough to kind of compensate you to say, I'm going to be doing these things anyways and answering people's questions for free. Like there's no doubt in my mind, I answer 50 to 100 direct messages a day, uh, completely free, whether it's on our Facebook group or it's on Instagram or comments or whatever it might be. And that's like the minimum. So other people have kind of taken to that and they've actually enjoyed it. So now they might be doing 10 virtual consultations a week and they're getting uh, compensated a couple hundred dollars per week in all of their recommendations. And that can add up to like 500 to a thousand dollars a month just in their recommendations. They're like, okay, that makes sense now. Like, I want to give back more. I want to do these uh, helpful videos and, and reels and recommendations and show people kind of the life that they're living and what they're using. Now, you always have to do this ethically, but I think that mo- I just feel that most people in our professional profession are. Some people, yeah, of course, it's like that in any profession, but I think most people are ethical and they only promote the things that they use themselves uh, and with their family. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I completely agree. I think the what you said about the virtual practice, I think one other interesting thing is the us as practitioners have gotten incredibly comfortable with it, but I feel like our clients too love the flexibility, mm. right? Like they can review a lab while they're on vacation and they don't have to necessarily do it, you know, take time out of the, leaving their office to, you know, go meet with somebody. So that in that respect, I think clients really enjoy it too. There's certainly, and I think you would agree after doing this for so long, people that you would love to you know, hug and meet in person. And you can still do that. But for the most part, we're able to reach so many more people. But our services are also that much more accessible to clients um, because I think it's easier for them. So that's nice. Yeah. And uh, we didn't plan out anything for this interview, but that was like a perfect segue because for the very first time, we got to do our IHP live last October. And it was like a hug fest the whole time. (laughs) 150 people there, um, all integrative health practitioners. And people just like we started IHP really in 2019. And so for the first time, was that four years, 19, 20, 21, 22? Yeah, almost three and a half years. People got to meet each other for the first time. And many of those IHPs were your actual personal clients. And many of them have worked with you. And so getting together in person. So I, I still feel this is that even though the world has moved more virtually, and that it's very important now to have a virtual component to your practice, being able to do even for uh, a regular practitioner saying you're doing like 10 people a week um, and, and you know, you're doing all those consultations, maybe like once a year, you actually invite people into a space and you meet people and you do a kind of a one day, you know, um, presentation or whatever it might be. Cause I just know at IHP live, people loved it. And it was so much fun. It was, it was, I mean, amazing. Like it was, it was pretty mm-hmm. crazy. I can't, I words like still really can't describe it because People just kick up, you know, coming up to me, sharing their success stories, how you know IHP has changed their life. It's helped their children, and and so I mean, it was incredible. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. I really have no words for that. But you were there with like a two week, two week old baby, you know, experiencing it for yourself, and uh, it was. And you didn't want to miss it yourself. Like that was the thing. Like we didn't no. say like, oh, Julie, you have to be at this event. Oh my gosh. Up until the time I left, I still was like, I'm like, you're crazy. You're traveling with a five week old by yourself. You're nuts. It, but I think I, I wanted to be there so badly. One, to experience exactly what you said. I mean, it's so hard to put it into words. You could just like feel the energy at every moment. Uh, but I wanted to be there to meet all of the people that have truly been like really important part, a part of my life. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was fantastic. And, and people love meeting you as well. And that's the thing is that you get to make that connection. So... No doubt about it. Those are my, my my big things. And so what I try to do is, if, okay, if those work last year, teach more about that this year. And we're going to be holding uh, an amazing event this October, most likely as well. And uh, inviting more IHPs back because we'll be able to have a bigger venue, uh, more people, and even connect with the Equal Life community. So be a lot of fun. All right, let's go over now kind of our future casting for 2023 or with this next 100 episodes over the next 12 months. Where do we see the industry moving towards, even if it's not toward, till until the end of the year? Yeah, I think we kind of see even more of a trend than we already have with people taking their immune system 
really seriously, they're being more proactive than kind of reactive. So realizing that if I'm doing these things to take care of myself, I don't get sick as easily, or I'm not as sick as somebody who's not doing these things, or I'm not having to stay home for two weeks, you know, from work. I actually recently just had a, you know, somebody in my personal life reach out to me who she used to use the word voodoo when it came to like (laughs) what I did and not in like a mean way, but she like didn't really understand. And she knew that there was supplements, but she just reached out to me and was like, what do you give your kids? Because we have caught every single flu virus. We've been sick for literally two months straight. Like what could I, you know, give the kids to support their, support their immune system. And I was like, oh, wow, she's, (laughs) you know, kind of looking to, to do these things. So I think that is going to be a big trend as as far as people really getting more proactive than reactive with sickness in general. Yeah, I love that. And I, I hope that that continues, but I, I really think that it will. I just think that, again, people became jaded over the whole pandemic and that it's not that you can't listen to conventional medicine. It's not that you can't do those things, but to completely deny of how vitamins, minerals, even vitamin D, like that we were talking about and its efficacy and just helping you to keep a balanced, healthy immune system, you know, was, uh, was a bit much. And so whenever that happens though, whenever you suppress a voice, people are like, Oh, let me look into that. Like, why is this was being suppressed? I'm like, okay, let me look at these studies. Oh, it's actually, they published it in the wall street journal. Oh, it is like, it's, it's there, you know? And so I agree with that. And the truth is this though, regardless of what mainstream media tells you to do, not tells you to do. When you have a friend that's getting results and then they just tell a friend, that's word of mouth. And word of mouth is really powerful because they're basically vouching for, listen, I didn't believe it either, but it is working. You may want to look into it. And and I just think more and more of that is happening. So I love that. Uh, Any others that you see uh, future casted? Um, So kind of future casting, I'm really looking forward to, and I think like, um, you know, being in a space with higher level clientele with, you know, really high touch, um, high level coaching, I think is going to be extremely important. And I'm looking forward to to doing more myself uh, in 2023. 100%. I just think, just like you said, there's two sides of the spectrum. So one more first time at home lab clients came in than ever before. But at the same time, the sophistication of the people that's already that have already been a part of this industry now for 10 plus years, they're looking for the next thing. And so I think that is that high level client. And I really, I do believe that those people are very underserved. So we've got a lot of practitioners that can help the first time, but very few people that can help that high level client. And because it means that you need to up your game as well. Because they're reading, they're learning, and that's a great thing. So we as practitioners, we have to always continue to get better. And we have to be using these things ourselves. And I'll be talking about that kind of my 2023, which you know I can, I can even share a little bit right now. So I think that wearables is going to become uh, more and more of not a trend, but everyday life. And so people will understand the basics. How many steps did they take? Okay, that, that's the basic. Like people got that one. Okay, what's the next one? The next one might be um, heart rate overnight, or it might be the hours of sleep you got. And then it's like deep sleep and then it's REM sleep. Okay, but they don't know what that means. But it's not gonna take a lot of, as the practitioner to learn, what is deep sleep? What is REM sleep? How many minutes or hours should you get of each? How would you improve deep sleep? How would you improve REM sleep? Like, and then you're going to be able to help those people with those answers. And so I, I absolutely think we're moving there. And I think that almost everyone is going to be wearing a wearable because there's so many people who wear an Apple Watch. So already, already right there, you have a wearable. And they're using apps like iBowen to pull that data in. And then there's many more people who take it another step up and they might be wearing an aura ring, the whoop strap. Um, the Garmin, like all sorts of different devices, or even the Hanu looking at heart rate variability. So if you all of a sudden become uh, an expert or have a niche in this, I think you're going to be able to not only serve the higher end client, you're going to be able to, if you choose to, charge a higher level price for a higher level of service. And that's because you've done more research. You are more of an expert. You know all the foundational things. You might even know the at-home lab testing, like with IHP level two. And now you know how to read and then implement protocols that are far more advanced. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I absolutely 
don't even think it's a trend. I think it's here to stay. And I think that if you stay ahead of it now, when it really gets big in another two years or three years, you're going to be there. You're going to help the people now. But when it surges, you're already going to be an expert in the space. You'll have a social media account with a bunch of posts already about it. And people will know that you didn't just kind of ride the wave of, of just getting into it now that you've been a part of that too. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big one. Any, um, any, any, I mean, any wearables that you see or devices you see people training more towards or that you yeah, might use yeah. yourself, what people, cause I'm just thinking practitioners need to start using these themselves so they can then understand the data and then help others with it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the aura ring in my you know, opinion experience is amazing. I can help a client optimize their sleep so much better if I have that data. And it doesn't really take much. Like they just pull it up on their phone while we're on a call and they're like, well, you know, the last like four nights, those are pretty average. And this is like kind of what I get for deep. This is what I get for REM. I have a hard time falling asleep or this is when I wake up because a lot of people, they have a hard time like recalling information that we as practitioners can sometimes obsess over and we can recall it like that. Like I could tell you my bad night's sleep a few nights ago, right? But like right. not everybody has this presence with all of those, you know, things specifically with sleep, I think. And so, yeah, I love the Aura Ring. I did retire it uh, for the first three months after my son was born because I was like, I don't really want this data. <laughs> but yeah. I just started wearing it again. And it's great. I mean, I, if I go to bed earlier, I get more deep sleep. If I, you know, push it and he wakes me up, I haven't gotten any deep sleep. And then I'm like really tired, you know, the next day. So there's even data for somebody who's not getting great sleep to kind of optimize where they can. I think uh, it is, you know, yeah, it's my favorite one for sure. And I think yeah, a lot I, of people agree. Well, it's, it's all, it's not one more watch or band to wear too. I think that that's nice. Like I'm, I'm wearing the, um, the gar the new Garmin today. And that's kind of the most advanced smart watch, but I don't want all the messages and texts and notifications, but this is one I'm using only because like, I don't necessarily, I think it's like more than I need, but it is great for all the different data, the steps, which is very motivated to make sure I get my 10,000 steps a day. But I work with triathletes. I work with high level, uh, you know, athletes and, and they may be wearing this watch. And so for me to already know all the different data points, what to look at it, the best faces on it, uh, it is the best for tracking basically biking, running laps, swimming, et cetera. It's nice just to get familiar with that. So what I say to practitioners is just use what you would recommend to a lot of these higher level people. And then, and then just choose the one. And the other thing is too, uh, a lot of people are using these on their phone and they can share. So um, most of them are uploaded into Apple Health if you choose to. And then you can share your Apple Health with your... Uh, I know that you can share it through Ayabon and then a practitioner can look into this, but I'm sure you can share it in other ways. I'm just not as familiar. The reason why I'm bringing this up again is that you can be doing online coaching where you're not doing calls all the time. And through a chat and other things, you're like, hey, I noticed your sleep last night was low. I want to alter your program today for not going for a personal best. Like you're, you're just going to be able to do all of these things or go to bed a little bit earlier tonight, simple tips that you can give your clients. And that's really valuable. It really is. And so I just want people to be on the lookout for that because there's just no doubt about it over the next years that that, that is coming. So that's that. And all, the um, other one for 2023 that I wanted to share uh, was actually um, on social media. And I think that people's level of content, it's going to have to improve. So what I mean by that is this. Everyone now has access to an Instagram account. We'll just say like something like that. And they're, what they're going to want to do is most likely come up with a one-week, two-week, three-week, or four-week calendar of actual content. Like it's going to have to be more than I think just be like, oh, what should I post on today? I think people are going to take it more serious as part of their business and just say, okay, on Wednesdays, I want to share a recipe. And they're going to think it out a little bit more. On Mondays, I'm going to share, maybe it's something motivational or, or maybe it's like something more action-based. Like, okay, um, the weekend's over. You want to work on this, this, and this. And it's going to be more action-oriented and not just maybe cute. Because I think cute is great and it gets people engaged 
and it's entertaining. So it's not that you don't want that. You do, you, I think you do, but I think people will maybe see you for the entertainment or engaging style at first, but they're going to stay for the quality content. And the reason why I mentioned that is that how many people can you really follow their work? There's not that many. Like maybe you'll follow like a dozen people, right? So you won't just want to be in that dozen where people are looking at your account every day for that information. Be like, oh no, this person's my go-to. They share great recipes, and it could be niche based. Like again, that's why I really believe in niching down because if you have like low thyroid and your niche is low thyroid, and you're sharing every Wednesday a low thyroid recipe, every Monday a low thyroid you know, smoothie or what you're doing or your supplements or why this one supplement I take and you do that once a week, whatever it might be, or, you know, sleep for low thyroid exercise for low thyroid. If everything is planned around that, you're the low thyroid expert. And uh, I think that that's going to be really, really helpful. I love it because I know you do a lot on social media as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think kind of when you said, you know, take it serious, I think that creates uh, one key thing that we've kind of talked about, you know, with, with guests of mine uh, specifically is consistency. And if you're consistent uh, on a social media platform, one, it makes your client, you know, your, your content more visible. So like people could actually see it more, right? So then you get exposed to more viewers. But like you said, people view you as kind of the consistent expert, somebody that's always showing up to share whatever you're sharing that they're following you for. So I think the consistency part of it is for sure key. Yeah, absolutely. And it really is the driver. I think that people are on social media for hours a day, sometimes many, many hours per day. And when they're scrolling, they see something, it, it is valuable and then you're leaving some type of call to action to learn more. That learn more is typically on your website or to set up a free consultation or both. And that's just how you get the conversation started. You're not, I'm just trying to explain to practitioners too, especially those first starting out, you're not trying to sell anything. Like that should never be the goal. The goal is really let me have a conversation with this client to see if I can help. And most likely, like nine, point eight times out of 10, you're going to be able to help, right? Even if it's a niche or even if it's someone that you've never even really worked before. If you are a level two IHP, you say, well, what we can do is we can look for the underlying root cause imbalances and we can look for food sensitivities and high omega sixes and heavy metals. And like, so you can always work from that perspective. And if it's a fit for the client, they're going to say yes or no. And, and then the times that it's not a fit, and we teach this in mastery, well, that's a great time to refer then to another IHP in that niche or another friend or colleague in, in that profession. So I think it's, uh, I think it is the way to go. I think that when in doubt, speak to a particular person and, and really teach without any expectation and then answer people's direct messages. And that's why like you should feel good about promoting air filters, water filters, your favorite nutritional supplements, your favorite, whatever it might be, tea. And, and then, uh, cause people want that information too. I know that I want that. I want recommendations in the health field. I want recommendations for good books. And, and those are always things that I don't think ever go out of style. So one thing you mentioned was that you did takeaways for all of, uh, essentially the last 12 months from all of your interviews. And so you did about 52 interviews. And so those takeaways were episode 191. So we're going to link up that episode and many others today at, uh, ihp.coach forward slash 200. That'll be episode 191 there. That will be uh, our episode 100 we did together and other uh, takeaways as well. So do absolutely feel free to check that out. Anything else that you wanted to add uh, for 2022 recap or even thinking into the future too, where we want our practitioners to be already be ready? Yeah. Um, I, no, I'm just looking forward to getting to interview 52 more wonderful guests in 2023. And I feel like it's amazing that we can bring all these business success stories to listeners who are either already in their own, you know, successful practice and just enjoying hearing it, but also motivating and inspiring others to, you know, take the next step because then it's again, that ripple effect that you've talked so many times about is it just keeps reaching more people. Yeah. And I, the nice thing is about the interviews you do, you're doing them with real practitioners, um, not just like an influencer online who doesn't work with anyone necessarily. Now, again, that doesn't mean it's bad, but what we're doing or what you're doing is you're interviewing real practitioners, real coaches. And most of these people, it's not what they started out in their profession. 
they started out as something else, uh, or they're going from a full-time mom or dad to then being coming a coach and helping people and, and really getting a lot of job satisfaction from that. And, and of course, creating a lot of client success stories. So those are fantastic interviews. If people aren't using those, it's like chicken soup for the uh, health coach's soul. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's giving you inspiration, which it should. I mean, these people started from zero, like anybody, and they've just built themselves up and they all have different niches. Like that's the thing, like you can be successful in basically anything. And that's because there's a little over 3 billion people online. And as a virtual practitioner, you can reach those people and work with them anywhere. We have clients in Europe and Australia and South America and Middle East and all over the world. And that's because all they have to do is have an internet connection and they can work with you as a practitioner. So yeah, I think it's pretty fantastic. And then in terms of the 2023, uh, what I want, I just always want our community, anybody listening to the Integrative Health Coach Success podcast, to be prepped. So nothing takes you by surprise that you're not going to just go with the latest trend or diet or whatever it is, but give people what they're asking for, yes, but also provide them what they need. You know, the things to actually get them the results that they want. So not just, again, like the latest fad or whatever it might be, uh, but an actual protocol, a plan based on their bioindividuality that's going to help them out the most. So Julie, I appreciate all of your hard work, amazing work over the past 12 months, all the dedication to doing these interviews, a lot of prep work, uh, asking the right questions and, and making sure that all the best comes out of those interviews. So again, thank you very much for that. Yes, my pleasure. All right, everybody. It's going to be a great next 12 months. We always want your questions and comments. Let us know what future shows you would like to hear us speak on, any business, career-based topics. Happy to help. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Have an amazing rest of the week.